Welcome to Martinu Manor and our journey to renovate this gorgeous building. This week we've been back in the garden getting everything ready before the spring flowers arrive. Currently at the edge of the Japanese garden we have this piece of wood. We keep painting it red but obviously people walk on it it gets ruined. We need to sort that out um, and up here to mark the entrance I'm going to put in a Tory gate. Good lifted you can clearly see we've got a bit of work to do here you can just about see the green bash which separates the tiles um, here from the gravel area. There is tiles under here, I'll tell you about them in a second. There's also <laughs> quite a lot of earth, the worms are pulled down, which is quite interesting. So I've got to make this look a bit tidier. Then you agree, little Gaston, to tidy this area up. We created this little Japanese or Asian courtyard um, in the summer of 2019 as a way of covering up the mess that had been left after some work we had done on the house. As this picture shows, there used to be tiles along here and a small bed on the left. And it used to have a black sliding gate at the end of it, which opened fully, so you can come in out of the garden. Unfortunately, one summer we discovered we had burst a pipe during the winter, and we'd been filling up the well with our fresh water, costing us an absolute fortune. And some work that was carried out, instead of uh, digging up properly the tiles and finding the pipe underneath, um, our local friends tried helping us, and what they ended up doing was putting a hole all the way through the lovely tiles. So instead of just simply repairing the tiles and sorting out the garden, we decided to revamp the whole thing, give a little touch to our Asian heritage, um, having spent so long out in the tropics. And the result is this Japanese stroke Southeast Asian little courtyard. And because we weren't able to get here during Covid, we never completely finished it. So today is the day. Here on the grass we've got two of these poles. Um, they were part of sort of an old arbour. It was falling apart, I managed to rescue these. Didn't know what I wanted to do with them, now I do. We have two of these, they're fence posts. Um, I don't know what you call them actually, they're <laughs> things that hold fence posts up. They have a nice big spike that goes into the ground. I've got two of those, so I can put those in the ground. Now I have it into the ground, so I'll put the gravel around it. Um, that's nice and secure, I can put the post in. As you can see, the two poles are in. Yep, they're crooked, but anyway, that's a starting point. Now what I've got to do is I've got to tidy up this bottom bit. So for now, I've just put along here this old sort of tamping bar for concrete. That will do, it's much, much better than the, the piece of wood that was there. Um, I'll replace that properly when I find something I like in the shops. Um, I thought I'd also take this time to explain the two food dragons and the Coca-Cola crate. So red in, uh, in different cultures in Asia is a very, very prosperous, uh, good color. Um, it, it signifies lots of uh, wealth and happiness. Um, and I needed something to put these food dragons on. And the local shop near where we lived, um, when we were in Borneo, was selling these for about, I think it was $2.50, it's about £1.75, something like that. Um, so we decided to have them, and then I'd find something later on to put the food dragons on. As it turned out, we had them on there for about two and a half, three years. When we moved here, we just felt we had to bring them with us. So although they look a bit odd and they're not perfect, and they're not really uh, in keeping with what we're going for in this sort of little courtyard here. There's something historic now about them, and I think we're probably going to keep those for many years to come. You can see also the width of the, the two posts. It's wider than I wanted, but it will make a nice Tory gate. Obviously, we've got to paint them yet, uh, but certainly a start. It also reminds us of our time in Japan when we sat on crates just like these to drink warm sake in the snow. A Tori gate is a traditional Japanese gate, um, and we saw them all over Japan when we were there. They're generally found at the entrance um, of a Shinto shrine, or somewhere where it symbolically marks the transition from the mundane into a sacred. And our little courtyards, our mini sort of sacred area, um, and reminds us of our time in Asia. And we were lucky enough to see a whole range of Tori gates pretty much all over the Japan when we were driving. At the top section of the gate, I have this lovely plank of wood that's uh, just been hanging around the garage for quite some time. Um, it's just about the right length, it obviously needs a bit of a clean up. Uh, what I really like is, although there's a split in the wood, there is a natural um, split here. Uh, and I'm going to copy that and put it at the other end to make the bottom section. So this will face the ground and this bit here will face the top of the gate. And it's very simply taking a piece of cardboard, uh, put it underneath the design 
drawn it on here, I should now cut it out and hopefully it will then fit nicely. Line, uh, with the cardboard on top of the wood, I can simply, I can just simply draw where I need to cut. turned over. Um, I've been out at the top here. Um, what I need to do is make a slight curve in the top of the wood and make it even. So I'll draw that out in pencil and then I'll cut that out. Started by working out where the centre is and then I can curve the arch um, to make sure that it goes through the centre of the wood. It's probably very very hard to see here but anyway you have two sections of the wood now with the top here with a nice little arch to it and the bottom we also the curve. Time to see if it looks like in situ. <laughs> well, it is spring, although uh, the two jumpers and the couple of t-shirts I'm wearing, you wouldn't notice it. Uh, behind me, I've managed to put the first bar um, of the Tory gate together. Now I've got to add the second bar. Let's just hope the rain holds off enough. Um, that's the top on and I've also added this small little sort of mid-join beam here, I don't know what they call it. Um, it's not perfect, but it's made out of recycled material. I'd like to have had the curve on the top a little bit better, but maybe once I've painted it, it will stand out a bit more. So, step one done. The next step is to prep this last bit of the garden, which is the wild garden. As you can see, there's lots of weeds and things growing here. Um, and uh, we've obviously got the mess of the rubbish heap at the end of the garden still to get rid of. A project for future years is we're going to tidy the whole lot of this area up, rotivate it all, lay proper grass down. But until then, we're going to make a wild me meadow for this year. Yeah, um, I'm not too worried about it. That will be something we can do with um, as the, the year goes on. What is lovely, though, is this damson tree um, has started flowering. We thought the damson tree completely died. Um, and the plan was that when we got rid of all this junk underneath it, we would cut the whole tree down. But actually, it's, it's like it's telling us, no, no, I'm so alive, please keep me. So uh, what we'll do is we'll make that a feature of the garden. Also, as I paint this back wall, we're going to fan some roses all the way along there. So that will look much nicer. And I must say, being a little bit smug right now, as it was announced today that the government are going to cut back on petrol mowers. They're eventually going to be a thing of the past because the emissions in the air makes me feel quite happy for buying a rechargeable lawnmower last year. Having given it um, a very easy cut, obviously I've got the edges still to do, uh, but next thing is to um, aerate the whole of the soil and then we can lay down all the, the seeds. Hopefully this will come up quite well on video. You'll see here, it looks like I've gone a bit mad with sticks. There is a purpose for that. What I've done is I've marked the pathway to the washing line and I've marked the edge where the apples and the pear trees are. And this gives me a really nice indication of where I can continue to cut the grass and where I need to keep away from cutting because I'm going to plant wildflowers. So anywhere to sort of this side and this side and all around the back of the washing line will be wildflowers. And I'll leave the sticks in there until all the grass and the flowers have started getting to a height where I don't have to worry about the sticks. So I have a selection of wildflower or meadow flower mix. Um, it's been specifically designed uh, in these little tiny clumps so the seeds are well looked after and uh, we're going to now scatter that on the lawn. I am aware there's a possibility that this won't work but uh, hey it's always worth a try. It's about to pour itself with rain again so I don't need to worry about raining it in. I'm just going to keep an eye on it in the next couple of weeks and uh, as I mow the grass, remember to keep sort of that side of the of the uh, of the little marks that I've made, and uh, on the route up to the apple, the washing line, and let's just see what happens. So uh, we'll come back to this probably May June time. Let's see what the weather produces. 
I've also aerated all of this section here. Um, I've got the rake over it, got rid of as much stones as I can so that I can see this as well. All before those horrible dark clouds come over. But well, as I said, they're going to be great for the garden for all the seeds I planted. So I just now need to sow my grass seeds. We're coming up to Easter, not that you notice it with those horrible grey clouds and the storm brewing still in the background. Um, but to get the terrace ready for Easter, although you wouldn't believe that, I actually washed this down yesterday. Um, the next step here is to paint on that wall as it desperately needed. Um, I've already washed it down with as much mould and dirt as I possibly can. And then we're going to paint it. And if I've got enough paint, I'm also going to paint the back wall there. Then we're going to put the sofas out so we can enjoy Easter out in, fingers crossed, the sun. So I'm going to start painting the wall today. I'm not going to be able to finish everything. There's a hole here, um, and that's because this was where a set of small steps and a pergola went down to um, a very weird path that then went into the cottage, which is there, or the chambre domestique. Um, now the path is gone, we've put some plants behind that, we've put some flowers growing. I need to buy some cement, uh, put those grease box in, and uh, I've got the cap stains right, and repair them. And that's going to be in a couple of weeks' time, um, once I've worked out how to do it, because I've never laid a brick wall in my life. But today, we're going to start painting, which will start there, and work my way, work my way around. Decided to go with this Santex uh, slate grey. We think that looked quite nice with the blue of the tiles, although it's a bit of a dull day when it's a bit nice right here. These are gorgeous blue. Um, hopefully, that'll go lovely with it. Well, this has taken me almost four days to sort this wall out. Uh, not because I'm a slow painter, but because the weather has been absolutely atrocious. I mean, it's gorgeous sunshine now, who'd have thought about it? But it's been absolutely pouring with rain. It's been high winds. Every time I've changed into my dirty clothes to, to paint, it, it just meant I had to run back inside again two minutes later. But this is the final product. last bed that I'm going to put in is I'm going to join um, this bed here around the corner to the edge of the sort of sunken area where the, where the cottage bit is. Um, I've got to tidy up all that edge as well, sort all those stones out. Current bush was here when we arrived. Um, it's got a bit of bay tree growing through at the moment and it's brambles. I took some cuttings of that in um, September. They're growing nicely in the ground there, so this will be a lovely current hedge we have here. But first of all, I need to put in the bed to make it look nice. And here it is finished. I didn't video myself digging. I didn't think you need to see me doing that again. I've also sorted out the edging on the other side of the garden. That means that the reconstruction of the garden this year is complete. All I've got to do now is buy plants. Whilst I wait for the, uh, the paint to arrive so I can paint the Tory gate, um, what I now need to do is hang this light. We used to have it hanging where the Tory gate is, uh, but it just doesn't look right. Obviously, it would be then in the middle of the, of the gate. So uh, this was a present, a little carriage light here. It was a present for my daughter and her friend Diana um, a few years ago for my birthday. They put it on an antique shop, which is rather nice. So I'm going to hang it above me there um, where that horrible halogen light is. As I'm doing things on a bit of a budget, I've managed to find this in the garage. It's a curtain rod um, sort of bracket, but that's going to be perfect to put on the door um, and hang the lamp off it. We don't need anything like that. I don't see the point of going out buying a special bracket, but this will be perfectly good enough.
with a quick readjustment of height, I can actually now uh, wire that in, and then we'll see the other look this evening. And here's the light in the evening. It really does help light up the back door. Um, I've got it attached to Alexa, so that uh, it comes on about 12 minutes for dusk every evening, so it means it will change throughout the year, and it goes off at 11 o'clock with all the street lights in the village here. Uh, what with that, and as you can see behind me, the Japanese garden all lit up as well. I'll wish you a uh, good night, and uh, thank you for joining me. <laughs>